Welcome to CityWise. I'm your host, Tiana Stevens. CityWise is produced by the City of Rochester to shine a spotlight on city living at its best. Well, it's called The Greatest Show and Tell on Earth, and you're invited to see it for yourself. The Rochester Mini Maker Fair is a showcase of invention and creativity inspired by science, technology, engineering, music, and more. Dan Schneiderman is co-chair of the event, and Amanda Presky is owner of Circuit Breaker Labs. They're here to tell us about this celebration of the maker movement. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So what exactly is a maker? So a maker is literally anyone who makes anything. It can be robots, it can be sculptures, it can be food, it can be performance, digital media, all of it. Mm -hmm. And what is the Maker Fair? The Maker Fair, like you said, is the greatest show and tell <laughs> you've ever been to. I like to think of it as a show and tell mixed with a science fair, a craft fair, and a carnival. Mm -hmm. There's people showing off all their work, teaching new skills. There's everything from robots, balloons, bikes, people learn, learning to solder. Wow. Everything. Everything you could think of. And Amanda, you're a business owner and a maker. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be exhibiting this year at the Maker Fair. Tell us about your business and what you make. So Circuit Breaker Labs is my line of jewelry where I combine recycled circuit boards. Um, so the name is very literal in terms of what I'm doing. Uh -huh. And I combine it uh, with resin and some traditional jewelry making techniques to produce a very sort of tech-centered, newfangled way of making jewelry. Uh huh. And you're wearing something that you've mm -hmm. made today. Want to tell us about that? Uh, sure. So these are just uh, probably vintage circuit boards. I uh, hunt them down and try to find uh, interesting range of colors so um, they're not all green as it turns out so mm -hmm. I uh, I found turquoise and I've uh, cut them and prepared them and there's a nice layer of resin on the top it's very cool is this the first time that you've presented at the makers fair have you done this before oh I've been doing maker fairs for several years now um, they're a global organization so there's maker fairs all over the world okay. and I've been traveling and exhibiting it uh, maker fairs um, all across the U.S. Very nice. Actually, when did Rochester get a Maker's Fair? We started about three years ago in 2014. Um, to actually go back to Amanda's note, there's, as of this year, there's 190 Maker Fairs worldwide. Wow. Where the largest one is in Shenzhen, China, with about a quarter of a million people in attendance. Wow. That's very cool. So along with um, Amanda, who are some of the other exhibitors that are, are from Rochester that we'll see, or from the, the region? So we have Mermaid Tori, uh, this one woman who has made her own mermaid tail and <laughs> attends events and uh, works amazing with kids. Mm -hmm. We have a dark room filled with different light-up makers, including someone who's created a holographic projection system, wow. a infinity mirror. We have someone who has made their own Iron Man, uh, <laughs> uh, Iron Man outfit. Wow. So people, kids, families can come and actually learn something as well. Makers are teaching? Yep. Okay. A lot of skills can be taught. Uh, people sew. People teach how to survive in the wilderness and how mm -hmm. to learn outdoor skills, how to fix bikes, how to solder. Very nice. And you mentioned performances and, and art and music. How does that come into play? Well they're making as they perform. Uh, we have the Rochester Recorder Society, we have Al Biles from RIT, we have a ton of speakers who are doing demonstrations. Uh, I, wanna, I would include, we have a spray paint artist who will be creating an art piece throughout the day. Cool. So a Very bit of cool. an interactive art piece. So along with planning this event, um, you're also a maker, not making now because you're planning. Um, what, do you, what do you make, Dan? Uh, a wide variety of things. I've made everything from robots to wearables. Recently I've been on a cardboard kick where we're just trying to figure out everything you can make with cardboard as it's everywhere, it's versatile, and it's really easy to use. It's mm -hmm. a lot stronger than you think. Uh, I've made rockets. <laughs> uh, I'm looking into starting up a cardboard camp eventually here in Rochester. I have a pinball machine design in oh, wow. my back pocket. Okay. Um, Amanda, you mentioned that you started making back you know, when you were a teenager, and now it's become a full-time career. How did that journey um, happen for you? <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, making's been part of me since I, before I could even explain what it was. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the kid in the corner of the room with the crayons at all times. So 
Um, I just tried everything as a kid and I was primarily into crafting so there was cross stitch and candle making and mm -hmm. painting and drawing and sort of sculpture building but um, I really fell in love with what you could do with jewelry. So my uh -huh. first love really was bead weaving and creating a structure out of really, really tiny beads. Mm -hmm. um, so it got to the point where I just had too much, <laughs> too much jewelry <laughs> laying around. So I was like, well, I should, I should try to sell this. Uh -huh. My family likes wearing it, my friends like it, so mm -hmm. other people must. So I built a business out of it, set up at a community garage sale and sold more money than I had spent on beads. And it was wow. just, I was flabbergasted that kind of people, an eye opener. Th this was something that you could make money doing. Right. So I continued selling at craft shows for the last almost 15 years, um, just trying new things, seeing what would happen. How did you get the idea? You see an old circuit board and <laughs> think jewelry. How did that happen? The timing also coincided with my discovery of epoxy resin as a making medium mm -hmm. and it's also like cardboard very versatile you can cast it you can use it as a coating um, you can dye it you can paint with it it's just incredible mm -hmm. so I fell in love with what it could do so I had been playing around with a whole bunch of different sort of objects and seeing what would happen when I combine them with resin and at the same time my brother was trying to fix his computer <laughs> so there's circuit wow. boards laying all over the place and no one really looks at them if you're not in the industry and I right. thought they're just really cool so I made a couple of pieces and because I was selling at craft shows it was an instant audience instant feedback mm -hmm. and it was positive so I thought okay there's something here I'll, I'll mm -hmm. continue to run with it what would you say to someone else who's an aspiring maker or who's making and thinking about turning that into a career? What's your advice to them? You've got to start. I think a lot of people are afraid to show their work and they're afraid of what people are going to say or they are overwhelmed by like a, doing a craft show for the first time mm -hmm. or you know any sort of situation like that and I think if you just do it. Mm -hmm. You can go to a small time craft show, $20 entry fee, and just see what people say. Mm -hmm. No one's going to be mean. So you got to start somewhere, and I right. think it's a, that's an easy stepping stone. Dan, um, what can people expect uh, when, when they walk through the doors? What are they going to see? Uh, they're going to see a ton, and uh, I have to say one of our biggest complaints is just immediately being overwhelmed. Wow, <laughs> right. You said there's 40 new exhibitors this year? Yes. Okay. So we have about 120 to 125 makers. We actually have, uh, I want to say around 30 young makers this year. Wow. From various schools, from them working on their own projects, but uh, they're going to see a ton the second they walk through the door. Mm -hmm. What industries are included? at the fair? There's everything from fashion, we have optics, we have startups and new technologies, advanced manufacturing, a lot of crafts, hobbies, mm -hmm. just name an industry. <laughs> How does Rochester compare? How does Rochester's fair and, and the maker community here compare to other communities around the country? We're a fairly large maker fair uh, across the country and across the world uh, mm -hmm. we have a strong maker history within Rochester mm -hmm. and that's something I think we live up to and you really never know what people are working on mm -hmm. a lot of people like to work in their garage and their house people starting to work in maker spaces and it's a rather well connected community right and you recently traveled to the White House? Yes. Uh, back in June, I had the honor of representing New York State in the launch of the Niche of Makers Initiative. Uh -huh. uh, since then, a new nonprofit is actually starting up nationwide. And as part of that call, I am starting up a New York State network Wow! to bring all of the makers from across the state, from New York City to Buffalo, Virginia, Ithaca, Syracuse. Mm -hmm. You name it, you can find a maker there. That's very cool. And the mayor, as well, has traveled to Washington, D.C., and she was designated a maker mayor. What exactly does that mean? What's the significance for Rochester? It means that Rochester has this beautiful history of manufacturing. We have this wonderful push for it. We're always looking to innovate. We're always looking to make. And the mayor is really helping out. I know she has visited both the uh, two main maker spaces in Rochester. She plans to come to the fair. Uh, the fact that she went to the first White House mini, uh, the first White House Maker Fair mm -hmm. is incredible. Right. 
That was a cool experience. I saw some pictures from that. <laughs> Amanda, what can people expect when they visit you at the Maker's Fair? Are you going to be creating jewelry on the site? Unfortunately, due to the nature of circuit board, it's not safe to demonstrate. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's made of fiberglass and metal, so it poses a hazard for bystanders if you're not properly outfitted. Okay. Um, but I'll have photos and sort of process information, and I'm more mm -hmm. than happy to answer questions about how I make what I make in addition to showing it. Mm -hmm. Will the jewelry be on sale? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. And, and you mentioned you also make custom jewelry. How does how does that work? How do people reach you and place orders from you? So I'm online. You just search Circuit Breaker Labs. I'll come up all over the place. Um, and basically, if you have an idea, I want to find a way to make it come into reality. Wow. So I've had people request uh, bolo ties and um, like home decor items and oh, just really? things I never would have thought of otherwise, like um, retractable badge reels. <laughs> <laughs> people in tech were uh, very much wanted to see an option like that, so Absolutely. I created that for them, and now it's a fully, uh, it's always available in, in my shop now. Very cool. Dan, what are some of the, um, some of your favorite things that you've seen um, in, the, in the past three years? Uh, one of my favorites was the balloon bridge that Aragami led last yes. year, and they had anyone who came up contribute to the bridge. That personally holds a special place in my heart. We had violins that lit up as you played them. Uh, at the first fair, we had a mural that anyone could contribute to. Wow. Uh, a sp I have to say, one of my favorite things to see at every fair is the Young Makers. Uh huh. Because there is something inspiring where uh, we have a nine year old roboticist. Wow. Very cool. And to see her design her own robots, building kids, and programming them herself, that's insane. That's awesome. There's uh, something empowering, I think, about making something with your hands. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. What is the, the general reaction to, um, aside from being <laughs> overwhelmed when you walk through the doors, what do people say uh, maybe it's their first time at a Maker's Fair? A lot of people are asking questions, how things are made. Uh, they trade tips because a lot of them work in the industry and would love yeah. to know, hey, how did you do this? How can I replicate that? And just they're always asking questions. It's curious. The fair is the embodiment of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Why do you think this is such a good thing for Rochester? It really connects. It shows that there is a huge future coming in Rochester. It shows new industries. Uh, the Etsy industry within Rochester is insane. Uh, I want to say there's maybe at least 200 Etsy sellers. If not more. If not wow. more. <laughs> and that's a market that people don't really think about. There are jobs out there. And there's a lot of new skills and a lot of new ways to build them. Mm -hmm. And Amanda, can people find um, you out there at uh, other events, um, doing demonstrations, selling that sort of thing? Are you on Etsy? Yeah, I'm on Etsy. Um, I also coordinate an event that sort of features a lot of Etsy sellers from the region as well. Oh, nice. And I you use a lot of social media. Can people find you that oh, way? Oh, yes, yes. Um, Facebook and Instagram have been I mean, especially Instagram has been very instrumental because it's so visual. Absolutely. And if you're talking about making and crafting and sharing what you're creating, visuals are a huge part of that. Absolutely. Um, finally, Dan, how can people attend the Rochester Mini Maker Fair? So people can buy tickets ahead of time online at makeafairrochester.com, and they can just show up at the door and we'll have tickets there. Excellent. Again, the Rochester Mini Maker Fair will be held on Saturday, November 19th from 9 to 5 at the Joseph A. Floriano Rochester Riverside Convention Center. And for more information, like Dan just said, you can visit MakerFairRochester.com or call 585-478-6898.